Happy Sabbath, everyone. My name is Abigail Allen, and I will be doing this week's lesson. The name of this lesson is The Floating Accent. Do you think God knows about the tiniest ant crawling? He does. He cares about many little things. A long time ago, God showed owed someone how much he cared about a little thing. Elisha was visiting in the school of, of the prophets at Kigai. Another student is starting today, someone told him. But there is hardly any room for him. This school needs more space. The students liked the prophet's visits. He answered their questions and listened to them. So they told him about the space problem. Prophet Elisha, a student began, we like it when you come. And we like to have new students, but we have a big problem. We need more room. Prophet Elisha thought about it. The school really was too small. So let's go to the Jordan River. We can build a place in there where there is plenty of room, someone suggested, and there are plenty of trees to cut down for a larger building. A bigger place is needed so more students can come and learn about God, so they could tell others. Yes, Alicia encouraged, that's a good idea. Go get started. Then one of the students said, won't you please come with us? I will, Elisha replied, and he went with them. So they all met after the river and started working. Lots of trees had to be cut down to build a larger school. Everyone worked hard, chopping and cutting with axes. Suddenly, one of the students cried out, Oh no, no, no! Everyone heard a big splash and turned to look. His axe! His axe head was gone! No wonder the student was upset. The axe was an expensive tool. The axe was made of iron and it would be hard to replace. It wasn't mine, the student moaned. I borrowed it. What will I do? How can I replace it? Elisha hurried to the young man's side. Where did the axe had fallen to the river? He asked. The student pointed the exact spot. There, he said. It flew right into the river, right there. Then, and Elisha did the strangest thing. He picked up a stick and threw it in the, the water, right where the axe had fallen. <clears throat> And up came the axe head, floating on the water. Lift it out, Elisha said to the young man. So well, the young man entered the water and waded to the axe head. He grabbed it and returned to shore where he fixed the axe handle. Now, everyone knows that things that are made of iron can't float. So how did this axe head float? It was a miracle. God used the lecture to perform another miracle. Yes, God cares about little things. He cares if we use a borrowed tool or a favorite toy. He cares about all your needs. The memory verse of this is serve each other with love. Galatians 5, 13. And the message is we can help help others even in small ways. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Finally Forgiven. The memory verse is from Luke chapter 6 verse 37. It says, Forgive, 
and you will be forgiven. Today's message is God helps me to forgive others. Has anyone you love ever done something that has caused you pain or hurt your feelings? Sari stole from her best friend Misha and then lied about it. She thought no one would ever know. But Sari was caught and Misha and her family felt very hurt and betrayed. Years later, Sari asked for forgiveness and Misha forgave her. They became good friends again. Today's story is very similar. Many people were cruel to Joseph. His brothers had sold him into slavery. Potiphar had sent him to prison. But God blessed him. In fact, Pharaoh put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Just as Joseph had predicted, according to what God had told him, Egypt had plenty of food for seven years. Each year, Joseph carefully stored the extra grain. He knew that a terrible famine was coming. When the dry years came, Joseph had plenty of grain to sell to the starving people. One day, ten men arrived from a foreign land to buy food. They bowed before Joseph, and as they stood up, he recognized his ten older brothers. He had not seen them since they had sold him into slavery many years before. Joseph wanted to be sure they were different now, so he decided to test them. You are spies, he said. You have come to see how strong we are. Oh, no, sir, we are not, his brothers replied. We have come to buy food for our families. We are all the sons of one man. There were twelve of us. One is still at home, and one is dead. But Joseph was not dead. Bring back your other brother to me, or I will know you are spies, Joseph commanded. Your brother... Simeon, we'll stay here in prison while you are gone. The worried brothers began their journey home. On the way back, one of them opened his sack and found money. What is this? He called to the others. The money that I paid for this grain? It is in my sack. What will the governor do now? When the brothers reached home, they told their father what had happened. We must take Benjamin back with us, they pleaded. It is the only way to prove that we are not spies, and we need to get Simeon back from Egypt. No, never, their father responded. Joseph is lost to me. I cannot lose another son. A few months later, the brothers went to their father again. Our children will starve, they pleaded. We have no more food. We must go back to Egypt. Their father didn't want to let Benjamin go, but he knew they needed food, and they needed it soon. He finally agreed, and the brothers went back to Egypt. When Joseph saw his younger brother Benjamin, he rushed to his private room to cry. But Joseph had one more test for his brothers. Were they still jealous? Would they be eager to get rid of Benjamin? Fill their sacks, he told his steward, and put my silver cup in Benjamin's sack. Soon the brothers were ready to go home. Joseph's steward did as Joseph said, and the brothers started on their way. A few miles from the palace, Joseph Stewart stopped the caravan. He searched the men's sack and found Joseph's cup. Benjamin must return with me to the governor, he declared. The brothers were worried. How could this be happening? What will the governor do? We, we can't leave Benjamin here. What will we tell our father? Your brother Benjamin must stay here, Joseph declared. He will become my slave. 
Joseph's brother Judah begged that Benjamin be released. I cannot go back to my father without Benjamin, he said. Please, let me stay in his place. Joseph could hide no more. He broke into tears and told his brothers who he really was. He told them about Potiphar's house and the years in prison. He described Pharaoh's dreams and how he had come to be the second most powerful man in Egypt. It was not you who sent me here, he said, forgiving his brothers. It was God. God was with Joseph. God truly wants to be with us, too. All you have to do is ask him. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy for gracelink.net. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. Post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. The audio engineer was Karel Holness. For more information, please visit gracelink.net. Welcome to PowerPoints, the podcast lesson to make learning the Bible fun and easy to follow. This podcast is based on the GraceLink curriculum for the Junior Sabbath School Bible Study Guide from the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. You can read along at juniorpowerpoints.org. There, you can also download and subscribe to these podcasts under Resources or on iTunes. Lesson 12, Victory in Defeat. Did you ever have a bad habit that you wished you could break? Did you notice that the more you thought about it, the more it seemed to control you? You may have already discovered that once you admitted to God that you couldn't handle it by yourself, he took over. A well-built but sad-looking man slumped against one of the walls in the Temple of Dagon. The temple was located in the city of Gaza. The occasion was one of the many festivals and celebrations that filled the life of the Philistines. The blind prisoner leaned back as if staring into space. His mind's eye saw other days in Gaza. Once in his youth, he had lifted the massive city gates off their hinges and carried them to the top of a hill miles away. Back then, he had been invincible. Back then, the strength of God had been with him. Now he was sitting here, getting a little rest. Ever since the Philistines had learned of his vow to God and had shaved his head, he had been blindly grinding grain in a prison in Gaza. His capture was a huge Philistine triumph. This celebration would honor the god Dagon. He could sense that people, as usual, were crowding into the temple for the festivities. Samson remembered when God had blessed him with great physical strength. He recalled major victories the times he had used his bare hands or the jawbone of a donkey. There had been no obstacle too big in those days. Samson knew he had started making bad choices. and his choice of friends and entertainment, he went against the wishes of his parents, who pleaded with him. Slowly, these choices had become more important to him than the work God was doing through him. Before he knew it, he was here, blind and helpless, a slave to his enemies. And since they had been able to capture him, the Philistines were convinced that their God was more powerful than his. Samson sighed and moved against the wall. Slowly, he brought his mind back to the scene around him. The people were chanting and singing about how Dagon had delivered Samson, the leader of the people of the Most High God, into their hands. Tonight, many visitors attended the festival here in the capital city of Gaza. Samson could hear them on the rooftop. The young people liked to climb up onto the flat rooftop and watch the festivities in the courtyard below. At least 3,000 would crowd onto the roof on a night like this. It sounded like the entire town was within these four walls. Samson finished feeling sorry for himself. He knew he had brought his troubles upon himself. Now, he felt sorry for the mockery he was hearing around him, mockery of the God who had chosen him and made him strong in the first place, the God who had asked him to destroy the Philistines. Suddenly, in the midst of all the partying, Samson sensed that God heard his silent prayer in helplessness. 
Dear God, he prayed, when you made me strong, I thought I could do anything I wanted. I thought I was strong, but I could not defeat the Philistines because I misused the strength you gave me. They have defeated me. Please, God, use my weak and broken body one more time. Win one last victory to show that you are God. I will gladly die with the enemy. Samson could feel God's presence within him. He knew that he was still loved, that he was forgiven. Now, through Samson's weakness, God would prove his strength. Help me, please, Samson called out to the boy who had been assigned to lead him from the prison to the temple. I am tired and I want to rest against the pillars. The boy led the shuffling Samson where he could lean evenly against two of the central pillars. He closed his eyes and prayed again. Then he pushed with all his might. Slowly, the huge pillars began to crumble. The entire temple shook as the walls collapsed. All the people on the roof and the roof itself caved in on the rest of the people below. Rulers and people alike, along with Samson, were buried in the crumbling ruins. Once again, God had won the victory. In spite of the bad choices Samson had made, God had never stopped loving him. And when he had stood powerless and humbly asked God for the victory, God had once again answered miraculously. Hi, happy Sabbath. Today's message story is about pineals. This is a homemade pineal. Have you ever seen a pineal? Have you ever made a pineal or held one in your hands? One morning, little Samuel found himself holding not just one pineal, but two in his hands. How did he end up with two pineals? Samuel went with his mother to a special morning worship in Sao Paulo, Brazil. During the worship, a man told a nice story about pineals and God. At the end of the story, the man gave Samuel a red, green, yellow, black, and white pineals. Then he gave the boy a second pineal. Give the second pineal to a little friend, he said. Tell your friend about pinwheels and God. Samuel knew exactly who he wanted to give the red, green, yellow, black, and white pinwheel to. There was a boy named Peter at his public school. He could give the pinwheel to him. He could tell him about pinwheels and God. Samuel spoke with Mother. Can I give the pinwheels to Peter? He asked. Mother thought it was a good idea. Samuel could be a real missionary sharing the pineal and telling Peter about God. But first mother spoke with Peter's mother. She wanted to make sure that Peter's mother wouldn't mind the gift. Peter's mother didn't mind. Then Sam mother had another idea. Samuel, she said, let's make a nice present for Peter. We can put the pineal into a box with a fun DVD about how to be a healthy boy. Then we can wrap up the box. Samuel liked the idea. Mother placed the pineal and DVD in a box and wrapped it in nice paper. The next day at school, Samuel happily gave the, gave the present to Peter. He told Peter about pineals and gold. Peter was so pleased. He liked the red, green, yellow, black, and white pinwheel very much. A short time later, Samuel's church held a special children's program where all the children could make pinwheels. Samuel invited Peter to make pinwheels at the church. It was a fun day for Peter and Samuel. In the morning, they and other children made pinwheels. In the afternoon, they sang songs about Jesus to all people in a nursing home. From that day, Samuel and Peter became best friends. Peter went to church with Samuel every Sabbath. He joined the Adventurous Club with Samuel. Peter had an older sister, Sarah, and she also started coming to the Pathfinders Club. Then Peter's mother started coming to church to watch the Adventurers and Pathfinders. Soon Peter's older sister, Sarah, gave her heart to Jesus and was baptized. After that, Peter's mother and father gave their hearts to Jesus and were also baptized. Today, Peter comes to church every Sabbath with his whole family. 
His mother teaches a kindergarten class and is a leader of the adventurers. His father is a church deacon. His sister teaches a junior class and Peter himself is a very good student with Samuel in primary class. Peter and Samuel are best friends. Samuel is a real missionary. God used him to bring salvation to Peter's, Peter's house and family. Thank you for planning a generous offering next Sabbath. What chapter did I say? Right. It was a very interesting story. Very, very, very interesting. When you hear about it all the time, now if you just come to church and sit down and you receive, it's not enough. You need to do more than that. You need to come to church. You need to take your Bible and read it. You need to give God praise. But there's a story in Matthew chapter 25 that tells us about 10 ladies, 5 were white, 5 were foolish. I will tell you why. The Bible tells you why you're wise and why. Okay, let's figure, let's, let's figure it out. Now. There was a wedding. Anybody in the house that was born to a wedding? Anybody ever born? Why is that? Anybody ever born to a wedding? Yes. Maybe you were bridesmaid and maybe you were and um, maybe you flop, maybe you bring bear up, yes. But there was a wedding, and these ladies probably dressed, oh boy. They probably put on their best clothes, yes. They probably had their gifts ready, oh yes. And they were looking great. And they went to wait for the bridegroom. And as they dressed, the Bible said everybody had a lamp. Now, everybody in this parable had a lamp. And everybody at the point in time was weary. Who is bridegroom? He was coming. And they waited. And they waited. 10 o'clock. They waited. 10.30. They waited. 11 o'clock. They waited. Some of them started to feel rusty. But all of them out their lamp. All of them out their lamp. And they took a seat. All of them did. And as they slept, never come up. Yeah. I could be a certain way because if the world just stand, you can't just be like a baby mouth because you're waiting on the bridegroom. And I still waiting on the bridegroom. Let me tell you. Nothing. It's like that. Uh, it's just bridegroom. It's taking so long. Put that to 12. Two minutes to twelve. Now, 
when the time comes and you put the fire on your wick, you wouldn't get poof. And you will see no flame. If we do not study God's word, we will get no flame. And we will have to run around Sister Lynn, Sister Who, Sister Lynn, Brother Who and Brother Lap to help you. But it will not happen. So we ought to read God's word. And what is that? Let me get simple for us so that you can look for to read. And the story is simple enough for you to read. And then come to church and the teacher has all those the same memory text. Nobody remembers. But I think they didn't know Did you say, what story of the lesson is about this week? Oh, sir. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to say anything. God tells us, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our path. Our pathway, have that pathway that you want to walk on. And when you walk on that pathway, you tell you something. The light in God's word, it tells you what to do and what not to do. But we don't like it. And because we don't like it, they find it boring. Let me tell you something. If you think serving God now is boring, then what are you going to do in heaven? Then the angels praise God right through. So if you say only oh, take it in the morning, and that's enough, or in the afternoon, Oh, that is enough. I went to church already class this Sabbath, so that is enough. And you have to go this week. And they tell yourself, and you have to listen to music, gospel music, holy, and then Sabbath. Sabbath is enough. But when we go to heaven, boys and girls, girls, mother and father, teachers, when you go to heaven, it, it didn't have no day and no night, so it didn't have no Monday we worship in at you. Light, God is the light, and you're worshiping right through. So practice now on it. Practice, so when you practice on it, you, you know you have to call for worship, it won't be best. It won't be best when you call for worship. You have to come to church with something and you're best. I see my, my favorite cartoon, you know, and, and I have to watch Spider-Man. And I think it's like Spider-Man in there, I think that means. He ain't going there. No, I don't think that means. But you can go there. We can go to heaven and spend eternity with Jesus. We will realize that this, I mean, you won't remember anything down here, anything. So let us, let us keep that oil in our lap. Keep that fire in the When we keep that fire burning, and we hear the sound, the bright Meeting. You want to be ready to meet Jesus when he comes? Yes. Yeah. I want to be ready to meet Jesus when he comes. So let us keep that point. You know what now?
to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready, my Lord. You can sing all that? Yeah. Let's go. One, two, three. I One, two, three. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. Uh -huh. You got it. You got it. You got it. Let me see who will get it again. Somebody over there got it. Right down to the last word. Let's go. One, two, three. No, 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 no. Together. This side starting good. Some people feeling here. Let's go. One. Two, three. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready, my Lord. Now, here the last part. To walk in Jerusalem just like John. 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 To walk in Jerusalem. I said to walk in Jerusalem just like John. I didn't say to walk in Jerusalem just like John. John. To walk in Jerusalem just like John. To walk in Jerusalem just like John. To walk in Jerusalem just like John. To walk in Just like John, not just like John, but 
just like John, not just like John, just like John. Let's go again. I'm listening for the just like John. And Uncle Jal, one more note higher. They're hitting that note too very easily. I want it. I want it. That 
that I might not sin, 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 that I might not sin.
Now, that's two things we learned for the morning. One more thing. Andy Roslin told us something about the ladies had to wait for the bridegroom to come. Now, waiting is a hard thing to do. Anybody here likes to wait? Yes. I like to wait. I like to wait. I only you like to wait when mommy has baked a lovely cake and it's smelling up the house and mommy said you gotta wait until the cake cool. You like to wait?
can see some people miss that one. I can see some people miss that. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to listen for the side. One, two, three. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord trusted him. And the Lord trusted him. And when the sun was set, and the sun was set, and the sun was set, and the sun was set, he went forth. Seven kings, eighteen, three and seven. Hear how I wrote the text. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord was with him, and the Lord prospered him with him forever. He went forth. It gets very soft. Let me hear it again. I'm closing my eye again, and I'm listening to hear who can say same volume, right through. One, two, three. Man cried and the Lord 
trouble. This is trouble. Trouble. Everybody, trouble. Again. 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 Well, I, I, I know everybody would like this trouble is just that. But trouble doesn't come through. Trouble is always come through. Trouble comes double. Trouble comes. Double trouble. Alright, let's go. This poor man can clap it. One, two, three, go. I want the boys to see it and the girls to clap it. Boys say girls clap. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, go. I want us to multitask. Now, if you cannot multitask, just do that. But I'm looking to see all the people who can multitask. Let's go. One, two, three, go. And the lightest person will get a gift. Two people get in this so far. When I come to the side, stand up and sit down. Uh, and sit down when I take my hand off. One, two, three, go! This, this side up. This side really hot. This side like fire. Let's go again. One, two, three, go! If you sit down too quickly, your side scratch you. Let's go again. One, I'm watching. One, two, three, go. One, let me see if I can give, give this side. One, 
two, three, go!